Welcome back guys to another episode of Mr. and Mrs. Pilot. Today we're going to show you how the hell does an airplane land by itself. Exactly. And we're going to jump straight into the simulator where we're going to be on a 10 nautical miles uh, from the runway on final on the runway 01 left in Oslo, Gardermoen. So watch this. So like Maria said there, uh, today we're in Oslo Gardermoen, runway 01 left, and we're going to do a CAT 3 Alpha landing, which means they have low visibility procedures in force because of fog at the airport. So as you can see now here, we have two autopilots engaged, and that's what we need for the airplane to land itself. So two autopilots for an auto land and one autopilot for a normal landing where the pilot disconnects and lands themselves. So are you ready to do this? Ready. Okay, let's go. Missy 737, a long way zero one left, wind calm, clear to land. Runway zero one left, clear to land, Missy 737. Good sir, good man, Did you lady. just call me sir? So guys, that was an auto land, and really the only thing that captain has to do is once the main gear has touched down, you just have to disconnect the autopilot, and then with his feet, he's gonna steer the airplane and make sure it tracks along the center line. And then, stops the airplane. That's it. Back to you guys. So that looked pretty easy, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It did. So it reminds me of one of the questions we received from you guys, which is up there. Why don't pilots use the Autoland all the time? Because what is the fun in that? No, just kidding. But apart from that, we actually need to practice our hand flying skills every now and then. And you cannot always rely that there is going to be an Autoland available. Like the aircraft need to be have certain equipment to be able to do an Autoland. And also the airport will need to be equipped for it uh, as well. Here's another question we received. 
How do you know when you should continue the approach or when do you abort the landing? There are three types of an ILS. Uh, CAP1, CAP2 and CAP3. CAT? What does CAT stand for? It stands for category, so just a category 1, 2 and 3. They have different minimums, which means the pilots can continue to a decision height, which is lower for each category of the ILS approaches. On a CAT1 approach, we need to decide if we have the visual references for landing at 200 feet. On a CAT2 approach, we make that decision at 100 feet. And finally, on a CAT3 approach, we take the decision as low as 50 feet above the runway. Each RVR you can see in the boxes here are the required visibility we need before even commencing each approach. So, what do pilots do when there's no Category 3 approach available at their destination? So here we are, flying to one of Stockholm's airport in Sweden. This airport only has one ILS Cat 1 approach. The minimum where we need to make our decision to land or not is at 222 feet. But the required visibility to be allowed to commence the approach is 550 meters. And in this scenario, we have 200 meters visibility in fog. So in this case, it would be perfect if the airport was equipped with a CAT3 approach so that we could still land in this foggy weather. But that's not the case, so what do we do now? This plan and decision is already made on the ground by the flight crew. So whenever the weather at destination is worse than the minimum for the available approach, we need to choose two alternate airports and bring extra fuel for them. These airports need to have better weather or better approaches so that a landing can be assured there. If the weather forecast would have said that it was temporary fog, then in that case we would have brought extra holding fuel to await the weather improvement. And we always do our best to plan ahead and make sure our passengers reach their destinations or at least an alternate airport close by. So here we have another question. Can an airplane land in zero visibility? Yes, you can. We're not going to go into details, but there is a uh, approach that's called Category 3 Charlie. And basically that means that you can go down to zero visibility. That means you don't see anything. Um, but that is, of course, if the, the pilot, the, the airport and the airplane is equipped and approved for it. All right, so who does a better job, the pilot or the computer? Good question. Well, uh, the thing is, the Autoland system is programmed to do a firmer touchdown, which is not always what the passengers prefers, but it's in the case that you want to break through that first layer of contamination on the runway so the brakes can be effective as soon as possible. So I think it, it, the Autoland makes a great landing, but maybe not the passengers. What do you think? It's a great landing. Yeah. I like it. So thank you very much for your questions uh, that we answered today. Just fire away in the comment section if you want us to bring up your interesting questions in the upcoming episodes. Let us know what your favorite part was in this one and subscribe if you haven't. Yes, you know that's the easiest way you can support our channel is by subscribing. So hit that button and turn on the bell and that means you will get notified every time we post a new video on here. And if you're interested to get to know both Victor and I a little bit better, then you should really watch our little three-part mini-series that we did. Oh yeah, we put it over here. Um, that we did together with our former flight school, OSM Aviation Academy, who is also a sponsor of this video. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, that's it for today, yeah? It is. So wherever you are in the world, stay safe. Have a great one. Thanks for watching and... Wash your hands. Bye guys! Ciao! Go around, flat 15, set go around thrust.